Okay, here we are again. Wow. What weekend, huh? All right, we're back at it, and we are going to cover a lot of ground tonight. Very interesting material, lots of different textures, terrain, a lot of things to perhaps open the door and, and let us all have a peek into the future. We're going to talk first with Terrible Tim from Brighton by the Beach in uh, merry old England, merry old Muslim England, about uh, futurist Ray Kurzweil, the director of engineering at Google. Talk about that, transhumanism, other technologies that are clearly being uh, let loose. And I'm talking about AI as well. And they're going to not only take over and control the species and subjugate it to such a level you wouldn't believe, but they're going to take us into permanent secondary status on this planet as the so-called sentient species. Hello, Tim. How are you? Me, I'm very well, Jeff. Um, thanks for having me on. Always a pleasure. Uh, I thought we'd open up with a couple of minutes from uh, Ray Kurzweil himself, because a lot of people I, don't... I hope, you're, I hope you're on your knees, Jeff, bowing to him. <laughs> One of our erstwhile gods or godlings. Yeah. Isn't that the damn truth? Wow. Well, he's working for Google, which is God, and... Uh, all right, well, here's, uh, here's the director of engineering... Now, listen to how he spins this, okay? Love and light and happiness and the ultimate rendition of the human condition in its, its most absolutely wonderful <coughs> experience. So here we go. This is Ray Kurzweil. He calls it godlike transhumanism. Note that all evolutionists inevitably do, as they do, Ray weaves together Darwinian tall tales, stories based on biological evolution, turned into a worldview. After the bit about godlike transhumanism, we will hear Ray getting into other things on evolution as he is asked for very specific data and merely replies with a, we quaint, create our tools to a, extend. a quaint Victorian kind of slant. So here's, here, that was the lead in. Here's, here's Cosmic Ray himself. Well, you can hear him say it. We create our tools to extend our reach. We couldn't reach that fruit at that higher branch a thousand years ago, so we fashioned a tool. We then were able to create new tools with those tools, create a whole nother evolutionary process. And we will literally expand not only the size of our neocortex, but the number of levels of abstraction. And those additional levels we added two million years ago enabled us to create music and art and humor. This is billions of times more powerful than the computer. I use this in undergraduate per dollar, but that's not even... He's holding his smartphone. This is billions of times, he said. All right. The most interesting thing about it, if I want to access 10,000 computers for two seconds, I can do that wirelessly, and it multiplies itself in the cloud 10,000 fold. That's what we're going to do with our neocortex. The cloud. So, you know, I'm walking along, and I see Larry Page coming, and I say, ah, I better think of something clever to say. My 300 million modules in my neocortex isn't going to cut it. I need a billion for two seconds. I'll, I'll be able to access that in the cloud, just like I can multiply the intelligence of my smartphone thousands fold today. But we're going to add additional levels of abstraction and create more profound means of expression. So we're going to be more musical, we're going to be funnier, we're going to be sexier, we're going to be better at expressing loving sentiments. That's my vision of what we'll do with AI. That's his vision of what we're going to do with AI. What world, what planet is Ray Kurzweil living on? A planet billionaire, Jeff. Yeah, well, that's for damn sure. All right, here's a little bit more. I think he's got just uh, one or two more th sentences. Evolution creates structures and patterns that over time are more complicated, more knowledgeable, more intelligent, more creative, more capable of expressing higher sentiments like being loving. So it's moving in the direction that God has been described as having these qualities without limit. 
And so I think evolution is a spiritual process and makes us more godlike. And there is、uh, beauty in love and creativity, intelligence in the world. It all comes from the neocortex,、um, and we're going to be able to expand the neocortex as I described. So we're going to become more godlike. We're going to expand it with AI. Of course, if you look around, Ray, you might notice that the average neocortex intelligence quota is diminishing by the minute. Uh, taken away by media, by that thing you held up in your hand, that smartphone, by EMF, ELF, all kinds of,、uh, shall we say, electrically charged media,、uh, which are being directed at us around the clock from every cell phone tower, the Gwen towers, all of it, satellites. We are so screwed, it's not funny. And here's Ray talking about love and light and more music. And more neocortex accomplishments. Well, he ain't telling us the truth, folks. AI well, I, is going I, somewhere else. I agree with you on that, Jeff. It's、um, um, there was in the papers that um, um, using、um, was it、uh, video games rot your brain from the、um, male worried parents of long worn youngsters that too much computer game playing can rot the brain, and now it seems. They were right. Frequent players have been found to have less great matter. Say scientists, action games such as Call of Duty and Grand Theft Auto have been found to deplete a key memory center in the brain called the hippocampus. Regular players lose great matter from this region, which could put them at greater risk of Alzheimer's disease, depression, and schizophrenia. <laughs> Is that all? That's from the mail. Yeah, that's those are just games, though, Tim. That means、mm. just fun, lightweight entertainment, no problem. So you can see that、um, hooking yourself up to、um, a computer, the way these、um, billionaires in the cloud cuckoo land are talking about, will、uh, not amplify the brain but、um, exacerbate the brain rotting, which they haven't quite worked out why. The 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 the, the、uh, deconstruction of the human intellect is well underway. And well, the look at the snowflakes, Jeff. Absolutely, the diminution of the, the neocortex is a fait accompli.、Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. And one must wonder why. Well, of course,、um, it's very easy to understand in that、um, uh, if you're a physicist, everything is a quantum wave function, and it's collapsed by、um, <clears throat> the observer, the old Copenhagen interpretation. Now, if you've got、uh, yourself hooked up to a computer like these、um, billionaires in cloud cuckoo land. Then of course your quantum wave function is not、uh, generated、um, from the brain. It's the brain plus、uh, the computer, and、um, the observer、uh, no longer is that、uh, bit in you which you call I, but in fact uh, the um, agent in the um, computer. And this, of course,、uh, according to、uh, the cloud cuckoo land billionaires, will evolve your consciousness. But if you look at the physics, you'll see that、um, computers, by definition, are、um, two-dimensional matrix entities and inhabit、uh, two-dimensional topology. And、uh, the brain, according to、um, scientists,、uh, is not two-dimensional. According to new scientists.、Um, Uh, we've got、um, the Blue Brain Project at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lucerne. EPFL has been using algebraic topology, a field of mathematics used to characterise higher dimensional shapes, to explore the workings of the brain. And what they have found beggars belief. As our brains think, learn, and remember, they create elaborate. But ephemeral structures in at least seven mathematical dimensions, and possibly many more.、Hmm. Mm-hmm. What's more,、mm-hmm. these transient structures—this comes from new scientists—which、uh, appear and disappear like sandcastles on a beach, could help us understand how the brain creates our thoughts and feeling. They might even unravel the greatest mystery of them all: consciousness. 
So one can see that by connecting yourself to a smartphone or a computer, like um, Mr. Cloud Cuckooland, um, billionaire in Billionairesville in Silicon Valley, uh, <clears throat> wants you to, you're in fact connecting yourself to a two-dimensional topology when in fact your brain is working in seven dimensions or higher and what you're doing then of course is squeezing out all the higher dimensional um, constructs applications sentience consciousness and squeezing yourself into a two-dimensional matrix and according to van der Hooft a Dutch physicist uh, matrix um, Physics is uh, only needs two dimensions. So you can see that instead of uh, linking yourself to um, computers and AIs in order to boost your intelligence, you're actually like in the Matrix film, putting yourself in a self-imposed coffin and um, downloading yourself into a non-real matrix. And if you look in the um, Matrix uh, films, just by chance, what is the architect, this uh, AI <coughs> bleeding off humanity, which it needs uh, vitally to get the machine uh, world to work? Well, what's coming out of the coffins is bioplasm, which is then fed to the architects and the machines in order to lift them from their 2D uh, world, which is where the machines live, into the higher dimensional worlds where humans live. So instead of the um, billionaires in Silicon Valley and uh, the um, F-tards at Google offering you higher <laughs> consciousness and liberation, what mm -hmm. they're offering re you is total slavery exactly. and matricization. It won't be elective slavery either. It'll be Not dominated by all of these things we've been discussing. All the technology, the AI, the algorithms and everything will be so thoroughly permeated into the consciousness of young people that they will no longer have an identity except that which is given to them. Exactly. And of course, with uh, these implants, which are now uh, in common use uh, in order to um, link them with machines, open doors, etc., and the military implant uh, all of their operatives, <coughs> um, look at... Um, the new super psychic warfare program of uh, the West using uh, Taylor Swift and the massive amount of bioplasm uh, that uh, she uploads and a handler, Joe Alwyn, one uh, can imagine she's running a number of implants, which uh, according to um, Jim Keith in uh, World Control, Mind Control, can be stuck into the Taylor Swift within half an hour, up the nose, in the ear, or they can do microsurgery by boring a little hole in the brain and uh, sticking the implants in the wetware in order to control it wholly. So instead of it running multi-dimensional consciousness, it's then locked in the two-dimensional prison of the Silicon Valley um, right. dictatorship. Right, right, right. Well, it sounds it's... mad, it isn't. Uh, Jim no, Keith no. is dead for at least, what, 15 years, Jeff? I miss him. He's a good man. We had a lot of good talks. <laughs> Yeah. And if you don't think people are implanted on a regular basis, then uh, I'm afraid um, you're not uh, understanding the deep state and the military industrial complex of the West. They're implanting people uh, on a regular basis who are used for uh, military um, and um, industrial um, weaponization. Now, I understand. We had this big thing about Obama um, and all uh -huh. of the brain surgery on Obama and what sort of implants he was carrying. God knows. Who cares? Yeah, they're all implanted one way or the other. And remember, <laughs> implants are no longer going to be. You shouldn't think of them as injectable uh, grain of rice kind of things anymore. It's, it's beyond that. They're dead. You they're can inhale the them now, Jeff. Pardon me? Oh, inhale, of course. It's all nanotech. You can inhale it. It goes right in. It sets up shop. It connects itself to your entire neurological grid and runs you. And look, this is not even external. It's now internal because your own body's electrical potential will power these things. Not that they need much. We're talking about nanomachines. These, these are going to become so sophisticated, Tim, as you well know, we've been talking about this forever, that humanity soon will be zombified. There'll be nothing left except that which they want us to express. That's it. Complete white way, Jeff. Exactly. 
And that's why um, um, ozone technology is good because it um, fries the little uh, nano machine. So everyone needs uh, an ozone machine if they want to um, free themselves from any sort of nanotech. Remember these big um, U.S. Um, tankers that are spraying stuff over you 24-7. Uh, what's in it? <laughs> yeah. Well, pretty soon. What, what isn't in it? I mean, they're loading that stuff up. It's not the old-fashioned chemtrails anymore. It's, no. it's a, a advanced technology for mass social engineering, shaping mind control, and impregnating humanity with what they want us to think is reality. The reality is nothing more than, than the perceived input from the five senses that they give us. That's it. That's all. And, of course, is. if you look at a snowflake, you'll see it wandering around with its phone, uh, not actually looking at the environment, <laughs> oh, but, but getting its observation <laughs> from its smartphone. So if you look at them, they're wandering around um, like, well, they are zombies, and you have to avoid them running uh, you over because they're not actually looking at their environment. They're looking at their smartphones. And this is the norm, which uh, for a baby boomer like myself is uh, truly um, yeah. Orwellian. It is, well, it's post-Orwellian, I think. I think Orwell, frankly, would be amazed. He had a vision, but I think he'd be stunned. We are in such uh, uh, trouble, it, but it's the kind of trouble that we're really not any longer in the game with. It, it's trouble. It is a fait accompli. We're toast. We're done. They've got the controls, and that's it. Now, the icing on the cake, of course, where there's power and control and money to be made... Well, who's there? Our Zionist Jewish citizens are there. The Anti-Defamation League, and I mentioned this before, we've talked about this long ago, but relatively recently they've actually gone public with this. The ADL is setting up, it's probably already set up now, they don't waste time, an, an entire new center in Silicon Valley to combat what it calls the growing threat of hate online. The center which the New York-based organization, the ADL, described uh, as a state-of-the-art command center at Silicon Valley. Think of this, Tim. They're calling it openly a state-of-the-art command center in Silicon Valley. will work to monitor different forms of hate speech on the Internet and work on mechanisms to fight back against it. Well, I remember, Jeff, I've been banned uh, from YouTube um, for uh, the past couple of months, Jeff. Yeah, I know. I've been banned, so I'm so um, hideously dangerous to the deep state of the West that um, you no longer can find Tim Reefen on YouTube because they told me I've been banned from YouTube. <laughs> All right, well, this is just uh, so the obviously, beginning. Um, Our constitution saying, um, is gone. Uh, must be terrible danger to uh, the uh, military-industrial complex of the West, Jeff. Shaking their knees up bad, they're knocking. Uh, here's another, another little quote here. This is the, uh, the group's CEO, Jonathan, don't call me Johnny, Greenblatt. He said, now more than, get this, get this, now more than ever, as anti-Semitism, Islamophobia racism, and other hatreds have exploded online, it is critical that we, meaning the Jews, are bringing best-in-class technology and resources to this fight. That's why we build this entire center in Silicon Valley. Unbelievable. We're, we, I'm telling you. Whoa. The Internet is being scrubbed as we speak. It's exactly. all over. It's done. We we yeah. look. We're done. Uh, yeah, they'll I, leave I a few. They'll that's leave a few why, um, around just for appearances' sake. But that's it. That's why um, I'm um, flying off to uh, China in um, the next couple of weeks. As I say, um, the West is finished, Jeff. It's gone. You know, wave, wave the white flag and give up. And uh, it's even more um, invidious than that, in that um, the Silicon Valley uh, F-tards are all into downloading themselves into um, computers. <clears throat> and, of course... Um, they, that's exactly right, by the way. Yeah, that's that's that, exactly that right. That is post-humanism. And what yeah. um, they, they uh, haven't um, gone into is that um, the brain doesn't uh, operate in two dimensions, 
so um, that means that when you download um, your brain uh, into a computer, uh, you're going to be losing um, vast amounts of uh, your humanity and simply locking oh. yourself up in a two-dimensional box. Absolutely so, um, right. No, no, humanity's gone out the door. That's for wimps. No, no, they don't want humanity because humanity might think and fight back with this crap. Exactly. <clears throat> Come so on, since where does... Listen to this, Tim. Zero point two, zero point two tenths of one percent identify themselves as being Jewish in in this uh, so-called world population. That's it. And here they are in Silicon Valley setting up their command and control center with every possible critically needed best-in-class technology and resources to gain the upper hand in the fight against hate, against Islamophobia, against... Oh God, hey, look, it is so bad. Who are these people to appoint themselves the arbiters the of what police, we Jeff, think? In, uh, the 1984. That's exactly Four right. Police. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, uh, it's so bad. Let me read this again. This is from Johnny Greenblatt. Now, more than ever, as anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, racism, and other hatreds have exploded online, it's critical that we are bringing the best in the class of technology and resources to this fight. We, the Zionist Jewish Americans, who are going to protect all of you from hate thought. Oh, my God. Transhumanism, what is it? What is transhumanism? Well, well it's... it's uh, you go ahead and give us your, your take According on to the it. Silicon Valley um, F-tards, it's... Um mapping the um, um, firing in a brain over a period of time um, and then building uh, algorithms that can duplicate this in a computer yeah. and therefore yeah. delivering the um, consciousness of the F-tard in Silicon Valley into a computer. That's there, it. And that will be implanted into us through the network of uh, ELF, EMF, and other kinds of electromagnetic fields that are constantly being directed at us. Yeah, but it's worse than that, Jeff, because um, couldn't get uh, the worse. F-tards in Silicon Valley have a problem because, um, according to uh, research, this comes from um, uh, this new scientist article, the Blue Brain Team, um, that um, for Markham, the next step is to tie the ephemeral structures his team have discovered to learning and memory formation. For decades, neuroscientists have been looking at how synapses change when brains learn or store information, but they still have little idea what such changes mean. Maybe we have been doing flatland mathematics all along, uh, which is this two-dimensional stuff. If the changes that occur in the brain only make sense, if you map them in a higher dimensional structure, then that's what you are going to have to do, he says. Memory may be hiding in high dimensional structures. That's um, seven-dimensional um, and beyond. So when you put yourself... Um, um, into a computer, which by definition is only a two-dimensional structure, then not only are you not um, uh, transporting your consciousness, like in the Transcendence film uh, with Johnny Depp, into a computer, what you're actually doing is um, sticking in a matrix representation as if you're in a coffin in the Matrix film and um, downloading yourself into a matrix uh, when in fact uh, the r really real human brains op operate according to uh, this article in seven dimensions or more, which seems mad. But of course, if you're going to get into real transhumanism, that's uh, duplicating consciousness in another avatar, in another um, mm -hmm. Have a uh, wetware and another mm -hmm. body, mm -hmm. then of course you need to look at uh, other ways of transporting uh, consciousness. And if you look at uh, Kalean photography, remember that photograph of the leaf where you cut it in half and yes. uh, the other half of the leaf. I have a Kalean photograph of myself showing yeah. my aura. Now, now imagine that uh, the brain 
has um, bioplasm, this uh, fifth um, state of matter, according to Russians, which you uh, documented on the um, uh, show before last, then imagine there's a bioplasmic brain that overlays the uh, wetware uh, on your um, biological brain. Now, if you can transport this bioplasmic brain into another piece of wetware, then of course you can move your consciousness from one avatar, from one body to the next. Now, it's, is it a coincidence, Jeff, if you watch the Matrix films, that the machines have to keep the humans alive and have them in coffins, and there's this stuff uh, coming off the coffins which the machines use. This, of course, uh, <laughs> is uh, bioplasm, which the machines need in order to raise themselves from the two-dimensional flatland right. to higher right. dimensions. How? Well, think every human has a bioplasmic construct of the brain in higher dimensional space over uh, their brains overlaying it. And this, in fact, links them... Uh, to higher dimensions energetically and the neural network in the brain can deconstruct higher dimensional uh, topology according to this uh, Blue Mountain team. Um, so one can see that consciousness uh, cannot be downloaded into computers because computers simply aren't fit for purpose. Not yet. So, They're now, trying. Now one must wonder why uh, seven dimensions and beyond, well, you've got the four vector of electromagnetism and you've got um, uh, the uh, time-like and um, scalar-like dimension which are inherent in uh, electromagnetism which aren't actually uh, used but are virtual. And then, of course, you've got uh, the fifth dimension, which you can achieve by, um, say, squeezing a quartz crystal, and it makes a spark. And according to Theodore Kaluza from 1926, light is gravity in the fifth dimension. So there you've got your seven dimensions already. And if you look at uh, Feigenbaum period doubling, which controls chaos, there are seven different states uh, of chaos uh, in Feigenbaum period doubling. If you look at dark energy matter, according to the shamans, uh, Carlos Castaneda's books, there are seven different uh, levels of the dark energy multiverses, seven different multiverses all uh, overlaying each other. And I've traveled into this, these multiverses and uh, the Castaneda books are exactly right. So one can see that for any sort of consciousness, be it a rat or a rabbit or a human, um, one needs this uh, higher dimensional capability. So all of the F-tards in Silicon Valley who are desperately trying to download themselves into two-dimensional flatman computers are doomed to do exactly what um, the uh, victims in the Matrix films do. They download themselves into a Matrix, which seems real, but actually is so divorced from reality that... Um, they are simply slaves of uh, the architect. And you can see why I got banned from YouTube hmm. when I talked about putting bioplasm into uh, AIs in order to uh, make ADA this... Yep. Um, yep this increase right. in uh, capability of simple uh, well, that AIs. takes uh, that takes ai into the third dimension at least of course at least yeah now if the bioplasm uh, has higher dimensional capability mm -hmm. then that allows uh, an right. ai which to a human brain is simply a um, not nothing sophisticated but a calculator so a uh, human brain is vastly more complicated and capable than uh, any AI that will ever be built uh, from now to the end of, all, uh, of uh, eternity. Why? Because AIs oper operate in flatland and human brains operate in multi-dimensional space. So you can see the difference. Now, why is it that if you look at uh, an American or a Brit, they are simply um, grim cattle wandering around as thick as pig shit? Well, the reason is that if uh, um, mentation needs bioplasm, this fifth element you were talking about, Jeff, then they simply haven't got enough of this 
sort stuff to operate. But of course, if you can have a farm where you can breed oh, yeah. uh, humans to produce loads of this bioplasm and upload it from them, as in the Matrix films, and direct the entire human race to power the architect, then, of course, you have the ability, as uh, I've been developing, to grow my own bioplasmic brain, make it bigger, 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 and bigger, overlaying it around my original wetware brain to increase my mentation to levels which would make any AI look like a, well, Silicon Valley f -tard. And, of course, we see in <laughs> Hollywood this... Um, uh, worry among the deep state. They were so worried about my technology that Guardians of the Galaxy 2, the father of the um, Star-Lord, I call myself the Psy-Lord, has built an entire planet, which is one giant brain. So one can see uh, if you can upload huge amounts of bioplasm from um, people who can't use it, like Taylor Swift or uh, Ariana Grande or uh, Selena Gomez or Gaga, people who get uh, worshipped and are the upline for huge amounts of bioplasm and siphon it off them, then uh, think about your own little bioplasmic brain. You can simply suck out the bioplasm of uh, these um, A-listers who wouldn't know how to use it uh, in any shape, form or function, even if they live for a billion years, um, into your own uh, bioplasmic brain and then extend it. Extend it. It's like building extensions on a house, uh, like a memory palace and making it bigger and bigger. A memory and palace. Bigger. Yeah, That's and interesting. bigger and bigger. In, yeah. in the past, the um, monks in monasteries had to remember loads of things, so they simply visualized themselves in a memory palace, and they put certain memories in a certain room, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then other memories in another room. This is lost to the eftards, uh, the snowflakes, but people like myself who don't use computers, don't have a computer, don't have an iPhone, and simply develop the mentation in their own um, brains and in their own bio The old-fashioned way. Yeah, they build um, not artificial intelligence, but they build uh, Ada, which of course is architect installed deity avatars. Think of it, you, you, uh, you've seen that leaf. Now um, that uh, leaf has bioplasm. Now imagine you take the bioplasm from my brain mm -hmm. and then overlay it round someone else. That other person then is sequestered. Now imagine if you've got billions of people uh, who are powering uh, bioplasm into me, I can then overlay my bioplasmic brain around billions of people. So you, you can see that uh, taking over the human race uh, using uh, artificial intelligence is doomed oh, to fail it's, it's... because they only uh, work in flatland. But of course, if you look at consciousness, true consciousness, the way the brain works, which is it's running multi-dimensional programming in the neurons in the brain, um, and that the less efficient they are, the higher dimensionality that, that occurs, um, I would recommend uh, people who want to know about this uh, look at um, the uh, New Scientist article from um, 30th of September. And remember around this, of course, is bioplasm, which is this fifth element, according to the Russians, which can be augmented. You can actually suck out bioplasm from other people uh, into yourself. And of course, if you've got uh, quartz crystals, which can then interact with the bioplasm, the quartz right. crystals, when uh, interacting with bioplasm, produce the piezoelectric effect and the Sergeyev sensor effect, which boosts them into the fifth dimension. And wow. the quartz crystals have these latent uh, vectors along the time-like and scalar dimensions, which allow you then to build a seven-dimensional construct and above, not only in your own brain, but in the bioplasm, which can be uploaded into the fifth dimension you, by quantum superimposing your bioplasm mm -hmm. on quartz crystals. So one can see uh, this Atlantean technology. Remember, the Atlanteans were supposedly building uh, supercomputers by linking their brains right. with okay, quartz right. crystals. 
one can see that not only is this true, but in fact uh, I've been busily developing it on a massive scale, which then allows you to then uh, sequester, take over vast numbers of the population, which I've been talking about, and making them do what you want on demand uh, at the time you want, which, of course, I've been demonstrating for a long time. So the FTARs in Silicon Valley, who've been uh, busily trying to download themselves into two-dimensional calculators, um, have gone down the wrong route as usual and uh, have missed the point. And you see why I'm obsessed yeah, with... Well, when they um, discover bioplasm and its accessibility, then, then they're going to be real trouble. Uh, I, let me say a couple other things here. Hold on, we're almost out of time. we got five minutes. Look, this command center I mentioned earlier being built in Silicon Valley, understand that all the major implements of the octopus called the Internet are owned by Zionist Jews. Okay, nothing wrong with that. Rothschilds, I don't care. I don't care who it is. I'm for proportional representation, equal percent. No, we're out of the game, folks. 0.2% 0.2% of the world population, we don't count, we don't qualify, and they're going to define and tell all of us what anti-Semitism but, is, what Islamophobia is, what racism is, and other so-called hatreds, and they're going to, we will be punished. We already are being punished yeah, on the internet. The, the good point is, Jeff, that they've gone down the flatland route, and they well, missed the I'm, point. Well, I don't trust them. They might get lucky. Look, let me ask you this, Tim. If I report a story, yeah, here it's very simple. Uh, Glamour magazine names a pro Sharia woman, woman of the year. Uh, if I report in Germany, a Muslim rapes a pony at a little children's petting zoo. Yeah. These are real stories now. If I report that, uh, black tries to rape white woman in Las Vegas Park in the daylight. Uh, black Somali Muslim savage charged in bloody stabbing at the Mall of America. North Carolina Muslim sexually assaults boys in his ice cream truck. Now, if I report those things, does that make me a racist? And is the command, does, yeah. is the command center going to somehow punish me for having yes. my own thoughts? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the um, command center has been um, uh, desperate to get rid of me, banned from YouTube, uh, kicked out of Bank of Cyprus that um, uh, went on to uh, steal millions of dollars from me. Uh, what is else? Oh, banned from PayPal. Can't use PayPal now. I say the entire oh, West. Let's see. They're all. It's all owned by the Zionists. To, they own it all. Desperate. So that's of course why I'm off to the Far East, China, etc., right. in order to take all my advanced technology to um, the other side of the world, Jeff, because the West is finished. You might as well give up the West. The West is only fit for um, yeah. the dropping a Kumbra. The command and control and, center. Uh, Kim Jong-un's yeah. H-bombs to release the Cobalt 60, Jeff. The West's finished. The command and control to center the truth is the... Because it might disturb uh, the Zionist masters who operate the thought police, Jeff. That's, that's what it is. It's the beginning of the thought police. No, it's not the beginning. Police. It's the end, in my opinion. I think the West is finished. Well, I think the West's gone. Euphemistically speaking, correct. Correct. I'm, I'm, I'm the other end of the spectrum. You're, you're uh, the optimist. I'm the ultimate pessimist. I think the West is gone, finished, and it's only fit for extermination. Uh, Mattel is releasing a new Barbie doll wearing a hijab. Now, this is another example. Every time one is purchased, another American will have picked up a knife supplied by world Zionism to cut their own throats. I'm telling you. But is that hate? Yes, of course. The command and control center said so. Exactly. But you see why I've given up on the West and uh, the the West is doomed. I'll be very interested to watch what happens to you over there. Tim will still be doing the program here. We'll just connect him up. We just had Yoichi Shimatsu from Beijing on several times, and there's no problem with a good connection from there. So 
Tim they will be on. Uh, they yeah. got brilliant infrastructure, Jeff. It's just yeah. uh, I'm fed up of getting uh, flesh-eating uh, bacteria sprayed in the face, not being able to shop in supermarkets because they're trying to poison me with flesh-eating bacteria. Uh, the fleets of microwave vans uh, roaming Brighton. Uh, the uh, your, spray tags they're desperate to spray me with. And all the other normal things that one gets in a normal British democracy. Well, we have another fun, <laughs> a fun player on the board now, and that is At least the... Jeff, in hmm? in uh, uh, Hong Kong, the Far East, I'll be able to go into a supermarket, buy food without having my face explode the size of a football and yeah, uh, the inside of my mouth look like I've um, swilled sulfuric acid. God. All right. Well, out of Madagascar comes an airborne pneumonic plague, the Black Plague by airborne vectors. Now, that's being spread into Africa now, and they, I think they've got a, what did they say it was a? Damn, a 20, 30% death rate or, or 40% death rate. Some huge amount. Remember the Black Plague of, uh, or the Great Plague, Spanish flu of 1918, had a 3% death rate and it killed tens of millions. This is, is pushing a 40 or 50% death rate. It is now spreading through Africa. And thanks to the wonderful U.S. Department of State under President Donald Trump, trouble, they'll be bringing in, yes, some thanks, black uh, Africans with the plague. Thankfully, we've got loads of the um, sub-Saharan blacks flooding into Europe. So hopefully the black plague will um, devastate Europe as well, Jeff. I wonder if there's any irony in that name. The Chinese have got, uh, what, 8,000 uh, immigrants are allowed to work in China. The rest get a contract and then kicked out. I think Japan has about, I think I was talking to um, uh, my American pal, and he said about 90. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> so it's you see funny. the difference. You see why uh, I have total contempt for the West and uh, the Zionist F-tards who seem to be in two-dimensional flatland as we speak. Well, you've said it all once again. Uh, I didn't see it, but I heard that Taylor Swift was on this Saturday Night Live program. And I didn't. I didn't see. It. Well, she she was uh, furious because um, uh, she didn't win. Well, she was nominated for six um, uh, Brit Awards. Uh, blah blah blah. Uh, hosted by Rita Ora, who of course you do know because uh, um, I know you follow all of these uh, musical eftards. Um, and she uh, won absolutely nothing. So it shows that uh, the brilliant talent of Taylor Swift is not appreciated uh, by anyone in uh, the UK. I think. Sean Sean Mendes um, won the, the biggest um, I know award. nothing. I know nothing about this. No, you, so I, I know you know Sean Mendes and Rita Ora. Um, oh, yes. And say Taylor uh, didn't win anything. So it seems that um, the... Uh, you mean she um, showed up there and sat in the audience and was no, shut out no. zero for six? No, no, she got six nominations and got nothing. Uh, so she wasn't even there. It, it seems that um, uh, the British government are using her as a wetware robot with all her implants and hmm. um, Joe Alwyn's a handler, but they can't even uh, uh, organize um, getting her to win um, six awards out of six in order to get loads of bioplasm to use her as a super weapon against me and Xi Jinping and Putin and uh, um, Raul Castro and Maduro and all the other uh, nasty thugs out there. So you can see the British uh, can't even organize a piss up in a brewery because if they're using her as a weapon system, they want her worshipped and they want her to win loads of awards, instead of which the sun has been uh, on a non-stop butchery of Taylor Swift taking the piss out of her non-stop because, of course, now she's a mind-controlled MK Ultra slave. Uh, she won't even give an interview to the press. And uh, the only way you know about a new album, which was released on the uh, 10th of this month, is to buy her £22 magazine, which describes how brilliant her, um, her uh, album is. And the sun is going crazy uh, because she won't give any interview to any of the press because now she's an MK Ultra slave, as you well know, once you've got all these implants and all the other uh, mind-controlled stuff in you, you can't give interviews because you tend to break down. So the British have banned her from doing any interviews, and for the first time ever, you've got a superstar that's who's funny. doing no interviews to um, publicise her latest album. So if you think uh, Tim Reef that's joking when he says that uh, the handler, Joe Alwyn, and uh, the father from Tavistock, 
have totally yeah, this, uh, brainwashed Taylor this is, Swift. Well, then is, look at the sun and you'll see yeah. they're uh, taking the mickey out of Taylor, who's not giving an interview to anyone, and they've got a whole double-page spread of Taylor interviewing Taylor, which is tongue-in-cheek, taking the mickey out of a whole double-page middle of the sun. Wow. So you can see how bad things the have The centerfold. Got. That's funny. Yeah. I think she's actually... Uh, She's not. Her brain is not a, an element here, but her handlers are pretty smart. They're going to let the public do the publicity for the new album by saying, oh, "Taylor's album. We've got." Oh, what? That, they're oh going to be shocked. The outrage will be palpable, and they'll go buy it. They're going to talk about it because she won't talk about it. You wait and see. That's how it's going to work. Now, one more quick about the uh, quick remark about the Silicon Valley Command and Control Center. That's their words, friends. We're not going to be us non-Jews. We will not participate except as an occasional token. This is a Zionist operation. I'm not being anti-Semitic here. I'm telling you the truth. These are facts. According to a statement, the Command and Control Center will employ the best technology and seasoned experts, decided upon by whom? Their own seasoned experts, to monitor, track, and analyze and mitigate, ah, there's the word, mitigate hate speech and harassment across the Internet in support of the Jewish community and other minority groups. Uh, the director of the news center will be Britton Heller, a former Department of Justice official who joined the ADL last September to focus on cyber issues. I think you, you got the it, picture. Jeff. You got the picture, don't it's you? It's a good thing you got the First Amendment in America, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. It's all going to be with an asterisk pretty soon. Tim, thank you. Uh, we'll talk to you uh, perhaps tomorrow night. Yep, tomorrow. Thanks. Bye. All right. Good night. All right. There we go. It's no joke. You, you can't talk about... This is a, a Jewish command and control... Uh, they've announced it. Center in Silicon Valley. But if I mention that it's Jewish, and there'll be very few Gentiles, no Goy in there, and maybe a Goy here or a Goy there, just a token, I'm, I'm a, some kind of an anti-Semite. You're not allowed to say that. How insane does it get? Well, there's another perfect example. There are no limits to insanity. Be right back.